Oi! I'm Eddie, the Skinhead Gourmet. Happy Valentine's Day. Today we're making chocolate dipped strawberries. So today we're going to be chocolate dipping some strawberries. A wonderful cute little thing you can do for Valentine's Day. They're wonderful to feed your special somebody and it's easy to do. It's going to make a little bit of a mess but it's going to be worth it. The first thing we're going to do is I'm setting up two separate double boilers. Basically I just got one pot with water and another one that's going to be empty and make sure that you can push down on the pot so it goes to the bottom and it's not going to overflow because we don't want to get water into the chocolate. That's a very very bad thing. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to put these both onto a medium to medium high heat. So we're going to put about half to three quarters of our dark chocolate into one container. We're actually going to add just a little bit of white chocolate and we're going to add more later on as it begins to melt. We're going to do the same with our second one and put about three quarters of our white chocolate into this one. What we're going to want to do is let it slowly come up to temperature. When working with chocolate, temperature is a major factor. For the dark chocolate, we're not going to want to get it over 115 degrees. We're going to want to get it to just under that. For milk chocolate or white chocolate, you don't want to get it over 110. And we're going to want to get it just under that. What happens is if you heat it too much, it'll lose its temper. Basically, it'll never go back to being solid. What we're trying to do is get it just liquid enough that we can stir it, mix it, dip some fruit in it, and it will end up drying out for us. And it'll harden back up and it'll have a nice shiny texture. When tempering chocolate, ideally you don't want to work with chips. Um, if that's all you have access to, you can, it can be done. And to, to get it to temper, you actually need to add about a tablespoon of either vegetable shortening or you can use butter as well. But they have, the chips have additives to them that make them retain their shape at higher temperatures, so it's harder to get a proper temper out of them. So you need to add this and help it along a little bit. Goodbye, my sweet brown eyes. I find well, a lot of work isn't necessary. We're going to add a pair of spices that are purported to have aphrodisiac qualities to our dark chocolate. A little bit of cinnamon. No more than a teaspoon's worth, and a little sprinkle of cayenne pepper. Not enough to overpower the flavor, but it actually works very nicely in dark chocolate, especially off of the cinnamon. Goodbye, my Once you hit about 115 with your dark chocolate, you can stir in the remainder of your cold dark chocolate. And that'll help, one, cool down the chocolate, but it'll be warm enough that it'll melt the rest. While we're cooling down our dark chocolate, we're also going to throw in a couple of sprinkles of white chocolate. It's going to kind of lighten it up and give it a nice body. chocolate cool down a little bit we're going to want to get it down to about 84 degrees or so and you'll notice it should have a nice shiny gloss to it and the texture should be a little on the thicker side as it cools down but it should move pretty nicely for you and it should be releasing a nice little aromatic flavor with it as well 
Stephan. Wait. Oh. We're gonna stuff a couple of these strawberries. Now I've got about a tablespoon of cream cheese, about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a few drops of dark rum, and about two teaspoons of sugar. We're just gonna mix up real quick. <laughs> Take our little bit of mixed cream cheese and we're going to put it into the corner of a little plastic bag. Now, of course, if you have a proper pastry bag, that's far more ideal to use, but this is going to be absolutely fine for our purposes. Now, to stuff these strawberries, you're going to want a decent sized one. You're just going to want to cut off the tip and basically kind of get the knife in and create a little hole that you can pipe your cream cheese frosting into. After you've hollowed out your strawberries, snip the tip off of your little baggie. You're going to grab your strawberry, stick this in as far as you can, and just kind of give it a squeeze. Pull it out a little bit as you squeeze. And you'll have a cream cheese or a rum cheese filled strawberry. We've gotten our dark chocolate down to about 83 degrees. We've turned the heat off on our one double boiler, but we're going to put this in stir it for a few minutes and use whatever residual heats there and you really only want to give it just a few seconds just to kind of give an extra little bit of almost just to loosen the chocolate up and give it a quick stir so now that we've given our chocolate a quick little touch of heat and a stir we're going to take our strawberries we're going to roll them through the chocolate let it kind of drip off a little bit and we're going to put these guys down on a baking sheet. If you have wax paper, it's going to be your best friend through this. If not, a good non-stick baking sheet may cause you may have to chip them up a little bit. But they'll lay nice, and they shouldn't be terribly difficult to get free. Now you can tell if you did a good temper, because your chocolate should be smooth, shiny, and uniform over the strawberries. Now once you dip them in chocolate, if you want to go for a nice different flavor, with the cinnamon and the cayenne, a little bit of shredded coconut will give a wonderful flavor. Although be careful, it's a little bit trickier to do as neatly as just the plain strawberry. Now if you repeated the same process with your white chocolate of cooling and tempering, you can take a dark chocolate strawberry and you can just run that right through. If they're both still a little bit wet, you can swirl it around and you can get a nice little marble effect. Of course, you can always do one or two in just white chocolate as well. And if your chocolate does start to harden up while you're working with it, you can always return it back to your double boiler. And if you even have to, you can turn the heat on to like a low to a low medium. Just to kind of loosen it up just a little bit so it flows a little bit freer. If your dark chocolate's nice and viscous and you have some white chocolate strawberries, you can take your spatula, get a little string of chocolate going. And if you just kind of gently paint over top of it, we can put some nice little chocolate streaks right over it. You can do the same with your marbled strawberries. If you just want to put patterns of little wisps of chocolate on your regular chocolate strawberries, this is easy to do. It's something that takes an extra second. It's fun and kind of playful to do and really puts up the presentation a big deal from just a plain old strawberry to something that's a little bit more composed.
Uh, if you did a proper temper with your chocolate, you can save it and try to use it again. I'm actually taking all of my leftover chocolate. An excellent thing to do is you can always melt this together and make a quick little chocolate fondue. At this point, you can actually break the temper, warm it up a little bit more, and this is wonderful to dip fruit. You can take more strawberries, any kind of melon, apples, really anything that will taste good in chocolate. And this is a wonderful thing you can just dip stuff into and have a fun little dessert on your special Valentine's Day. Uh, just a little bit of patience and creativity. You can make yourself a wonderful little spread that will hopefully do well for you come Valentine's Day. Once you get these guys laid out, you can let them sit. You can already notice that the outer shell of it is going to be starting to get firm and starting to reharden. You can hurry that along in the fridge or your freezer, but you don't want to let it go for too long. Once these guys are hardened up, they're ready to come off of the tray and be enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'm Eddie the Skinhead Gourmet. Have a happy Valentine's Day, boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's is good. <laughs>